All right, EJ versus Degenerates. Actually, a day earlier than usual. Uh, Zachary, what's up, buddy? You win again this week. Is that why we're starting earlier? Give you a better chance? Well, a little behind the curtain. The reason starting a day earlier this week is because, uh, uh, so we, you guys know every time on Tuesday nights, I, I appear on the Hollow Podcast every week. Uh, we move the show to, to Wednesday co- to facilitate all the parents on the on the panel, like myself, to participate in the Halloween festivities, of course. So I figured, okay, you know what? This one, this one a little day earlier. We can, I don't know what possibility with the time here. And uh, we'll, we'll do that, of course. So I, I, if you guys see me on, on YouTube right now, I look exhausted because I literally just got from trick, trick or treat with the kids like half an hour ago. Oh, man, I'm tired. <laughs> How much candy have you already eaten? Just one. I had one Kit Kat. That's it. I have a rule. I have a rule set. Yeah, but... Okay. So, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm not a big candy guy, dude. I've never been What makes guy. it so funny that you had a Kit Kat? When I got to Walgreens after work today, it's like mm-hmm. 6 o'clock at night already. Right. All they had for sale were Kit Kats. It's the best, man. It was, like, it was like two bags for 10 bucks. So I get that, right? Yeah. The first two groups of kids that, that come to the door, I'm mm-hmm. like, take two. They're like, oh, Kit Kat? Or, uh, Kit Kat? It's like, what the fuck, man? I'm telling you, you can have two of them. You'd be happy. This old, that's the only candy that matters. Dude, I, look, I, Zach, I have a rule in my house with my kids. They can have any candy they want, yeah. but all the Kit Kats you get from, from trick or treating go to me. That's it. So the third group, mm-hmm. the girl's got to be like 13, 14 years old. She said, oh, Kit Kat. I was like, oh, you can have three of them. Yeah, there you go. After feeling like Jesus, I bought the wrong candy. One kid actually wanted it. I was like, "Hey, you can have as much as you want, girl." Yeah, exactly. Um, we got a lot to get to today. Um, obviously our picks of the week, well, picks of the week, our picks of week, week week nine rather. Um, but we got NBA things to back on. Talk about real quick. We also had a trade deadline today. Um, in the NFL, which we'll touch on in a second. Your your team was very busy today. You guys trade away, was it uh, that, that kid? Um, Young and Montez Sweat. Montez Sweat. Uh, trade away for, for picks. Did I read that right? That Chase Young fetched a conditional third rounder? I didn't hear it was conditional. I heard it was just a third rounder. If it's conditional and goes up to like a second rounder, that's good. Okay. But Your, uh, your thoughts on selling? Well, no. They were both free agents. We've already basically given 45 50 million dollars to our two defensive tackles Mm -hmm. you might as well let the defensive ends walk bring in some younger guys yeah but uh, i heard it from like three different podcasters already about how Mm -hmm. washington got ripped off by the 49ers but then they robbed they robbed the bears so it's like if we got a second and a third overall for the two guys, that's what you would want, a second and a third from for both of those guys. So who cares which which team you're getting it from? Be happy. Because the second rounder is going to be so early. It's, like, it's going to be, what, top 40 picks? Mm-hmm. Who cares what San Fran's going to be? They balance out. And only that, that, the way I saw that at Washington is that they, they New Orleans group, obviously, I think after this year they're gonna they're gonna clean house from from oh, top yeah. to bottom. No, I, I, Robert Harris on his last on his last days here. I think he's done this year. You know they're gonna clean the entire roster. They, they, they're gonna try to draft a quarterback. They, they they want as much assets as possible to build what they want around. I don't know team. if they're gonna try and draft a quarterback this year. Do you like, does he like Sam Hill? Look for all the issues going on in Washington right now. Quarterback play hasn't been the issue. He's I had agree. one bad game. One you, bad game where you could blame him for why. Do you do you think they, they believe in Sam Howell for the future? Or do you at least they're gonna go year by year? I think they'll they'll definitely give him one more year with an with a new a new head coach just so they can decide what they want to do in next draft. Right. I'm surprised there's there were more there were more transactions. I know the Giants got they, they traded with Leonard Williams State for a second and a second rounder for next year and a and a, yeah. like a six rounder. That's pretty good actually. Yeah. Yeah. If you're selling you, you get the assets back well you can. I I'm I'm I have no problem whatsoever. Uh, no no big move no other than Chase Young, no big names really. No Devontae Adams stays where he's at. Uh there's no there's really no big names. I know the Browns had a pick uh, a, a trade their receiver people Jones traded him to Detroit, I saw. Well, I I know Marvin Jones was out for personal issues. No, right, and he, and then they cut him. 
Okay, so there you they, go. They, they trade for people Jones. People Jones they traded for. Okay, Cleveland, so that, 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 that's the roster spot they're filling there. Right. Other than that, there's no other no other massive moves. But uh, I thought I have to be a little more active than that, honestly, today. But I know yeah. you really hated the Bears trade. The sweat, the sweat move. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't know what the Bears are doing. My first thought is was when they made that move, was they realized the impact that Roquan Smith has had with Baltimore since they traded him right before the deadline. Right. So I think they're thinking maybe they can catch that same kind of magic. Okay. And then sign him. That'd be my only thought. Yeah. That or they had the fran- they also had the ability to franchise franchise tag yeah, so. Correct. Right. All right, so that's our picks of the week. As you know, we, we do it. We pick a we pick either we you and I pick either the spread or over under. Um we got four buys this week. We got the four buy teams, you got the Broncos, we got the Lions, the Jaguars, and the Niners. I'm sure this is easy of all these four teams. Who needs to buy the most? Oh, the Niners. Oh god, yes. Chase Jones and Niners away. Expected, expected what three straight losses? Yeah. yeah. But you know what though? Even with that, even the, the four straight, the three straight losses, I'm, I'm still not worried about them. I think as long as they're healthy by by January, and they're in the playoffs, they're still scary. They're, they're the one team where they can go ten and seven, and I'm still thinking, well, this team can still play playing the Super Bowl because of what they do. They travel as well. They can play. They can win on the road. Yeah, yeah. They got the defense that travels. They <laughs> do now, especially with Chase, Chase Young down here. I Ooh. mean, CMC, he he can carry the ball, so yeah. you're good yeah. there. Are you worried about Purdy a little bit? He has not looked good his last three games. Yeah, yeah, and that's, a, that's a drop. That's one of the toughest things is when a young quarterback first hit, has that, that first struggle. Mm-hmm. So. All right. Let's get to the Thursday game first. All right, I know, I know we're – Actually, a day extra earlier than usual on the podcast, but it, it is what it is. Um, the Titans heading to Pittsburgh face to face the Steelers. Steelers two and a half point favorites over under thirty six and a half. Hey, the Will Levis era has begun. Yeah, the, who had four touchdowns in and season or for his first time? No, no, that I was that coming. I'm surprised that the Titans did not trade Tannehill now after that after that performance. I'm surprised. Honestly. Oh yeah, I'm surprised. Um, Steelers tough loss against the Jags last week. It is what it is. But to me, this is easy under. Easy under. This is gonna be a snooze fest on Thursday, I think. Unless Will Levis is the future, and Will Levis is that offense can get really good. I mean, look, look, they they on un- they unlocked Hopkins this week. DeAndre Hopkins this week. I mean, so maybe. But again, this is in Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh is a defensive team. Um. I'll, I'll take the under this one for uh, Steelers and uh, Titans. What you got? Look, if it wasn't for the fact it's in Pittsburgh on a Thursday night game, mm-hmm. you you made it Sunday at one. I would take Tennessee, and I would think they'd win in Pittsburgh. Really? Yeah. What do you have starting now, Trubisky? I didn't pick it. I thought pick it. Pick it. I thought pick it went out. Maybe he did. I, I didn't watch that game, honestly. Yeah, I thought he went out with like a concussion. Right. Maybe, maybe. you could be right. You could be right. But I know Trubisky came in for a while. You, you, you taking Tennessee or no? I'm taking the under like you. Oh, take the under. Okay. I, I'm cool. too scared to take Tennessee. I would love to if it was Sunday at one o'clock, not Thursday night. Right. Good Pittsburgh. point. All right. Probably the game of the week. We have four huge games this week. Here's the one to four. Nine thirty, mimosa time, baby. Dolphins, Chiefs in Germany. Chiefs are only two and a half point favorites over under 15 and a half. Zach, Dolphins third try now. Winning a game that matters. The 0 and 2 when, when winning game when 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 playing games that matter. Um Chiefs with a tough, tough, tough loss last week in Denver. Um you imagine they'll want to bounce back in a big way. This is a massive game because both these teams are six and two. We're talking about bye weeks, number one seeds, all that. These are the games we we we, we look at. I mean, we, 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 we were in January. It's like, oh, Chiefs, that Chiefs Dolphins game was huge. Um, that being said, I like the over in this one. That's a little bit of fireworks here. It's in Germany. It's in, it's yeah. the, 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 no, it's in, no. it's in the crowd a little bit. 
Give me, I mean, Dolphins games are pretty much easy, almost easy overs. So I got the over this one. And I'm on the other way. Under? I feel safer taking Kansas City than I do taking the over in this game. I mean, you nailed it when you with the opening statement. Over two this year, I think every every loss that Tua has is against like a playoff contender so far. He struggles mightily mm-hmm. when he goes up against big competition. So, yeah, KC. I like I like Kansas City on the bounce back. Okay, I can see that. I can see that. All right, next one here: the Minnesota Vikings in Atlanta face the Falcons. <clears throat> The Falcons are four and a half point favorites. The over under is three seven and a half. Uh, Zach, you got this one. Atlanta, man. I, this is a game I don't want to watch. I know you'll be watching it for Bijan, but I won't even turn the game on unless it's in red zone. I'm not even watch this game either, bro. I, I mean, Kirk Cousins was, was available. I say maybe I want to watch it, but no. In fact, I'm going to go under this one. Um, <clears throat> I would have, by the way, I would have said, had the Vikings, well, he won on, on Sunday, yeah. had Kirk Cousins survived that game and not been out for the year, honestly, I would have locked the Vikings to the playoff team this year because they were surging. They were surging at this point with Cousins. Jordan Addison's yeah. balling. Okay. Yeah. You get, you get Justin yeah, Jefferson back up. Yep. So I would have locked him up as a wild card team, honestly, but he's gone. So it is what it is. Uh, so, by the way, speaking of the trade deadline, you saw Josh Dobbs? Yeah. And odds are they're going to put him in. This Sunday to start. Well, well, they said they said that the rookie is the starter for now. They announced that already today. But right, I don't don't. But I, I he he probably on a short leash. I'm sure. So, but I'm gonna go under in this one. All right, next one we have the Arizona Cardinals and the Cleveland face the Browns. The Browns are eight point favorites. The over under is thirty seven and a half. Oh man, so no Josh Dobbs. Kyle Murray's not ready yet. This screams the easy Cleveland Cleveland spread here. I mean, now granted, the Browns do have a hard time covering spreads here because they're not the most supposed to team in the league. But whoever the fucking quarterback is in Arizona, I mean, I got you gotta go Cleveland, right? Well, who's the quarterback for Cleveland this week? PJ Walker again? I guess. This is, this is the problem with doing the show on Tuesday. We don't know what's exactly what's going on. Look, well, this is a stay. This is a stay away. Let's start there. Yeah. Until you know more information on my, my kickoff, stay away. Gamblers alert! Don't don't gamble this game. <laughs> Let's just go there. Um, but I mean, Arizona doesn't have a quarterback I mean, like, that I know of anyway. So, I guess I guess go Cleveland. Yeah, eight points. Can you cover the club? at home? Eight points. And I, I'm going. Okay, Arizona has no defense, or I mean, Arizona has a little defense, but they're gonna have zero offense. Give me the under. I don't feel confident about Cleveland's offense. It's a good point. It's a good point. You're telling me it couldn't be like, I don't know, 17 to 6? You still get your cover, too, there. That's true. So you're going under. Yeah. All right. Next one. L.A. Rams and the Green Bay face the Packers. Packers, three-point favorites, over under, 39.5. Zach, what you got on this one? Ooh, two teams. A, fuck it, man. Give me the Rams and Stafford. At least he's getting to go back to play like a uh, a, a Midwest team that he's familiar with in Green Bay. So you're, you're out on uh, the, the 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 Packers now, officially. Every Jordan Jordan Love, man, it's in his head at this point. Every week he's getting worse and worse. Yeah. Um. I'm gonna go slight over on this one. Slight over. Um, I, I do think the Rams could win this game though, but I, I I'll go slide over on this one. I see a little bit of scoring, not not anything over the top, but three and a half is pretty nice. They got, got I can see like a 24 21 game here, you know what I mean? So all right, next one here. We have the Washington Commanders, your boys, heading to England, face the Patriots. The Pats are three point favorites, the over under 40 and a half. Well, your boys are sellers. You know, you, you do got Sam Howell still. <laughs> They fought well, well he's been good. He's been good. He has been a bright spot for the team. But I'm taking the pass this week, man. Look, losing the Dolphins is not a big deal. You know they lose that game last week, but they were competitive most of the, most of the way. 
But um, now nah, give me Pats here to, to win at home. I see a bounce. I see a bounce back here. Commanders are selling everybody off now and all this, and it's probably not going to put a locker room. And yeah, give me, give me, give me, give me New England here. What you got? So I think it was like seventeen seventy five. We pushed the British out of out of America. All right. right. Well, guess what? The Washington Commanders are coming overseas now, and we're gonna hail <laughs> hail the victory, baby. Give me Washington. Washington. <laughs> You're such a homer, I swear. <laughs> All right, next one we have the Chicago Bears heading to New Orleans to face the Saints. The Saints are seven half point favorites. The over under is forty one. Zach, what you got? Wait, repeat the line again. Saints seven and a half, uh, right. over under forty one. It's got a number. Get. Give me, give me the Saints. I, I don't even know what to do with this game. This is, why. Honestly, I don't. Sometimes I like Derek Carr. Sometimes he's connecting with his wide receivers, and other times it's like he wants to get in a fist fight with them. <laughs> Especially with Lave, you. man. They're always Not on with you. page. I thought, I thought they played their best game of the, of the year uh, this past week in Indianapolis. Yeah. Most cohesive game on both sides. I thought this was Kamara's best showing. Um, I'm with you also. Take me to the Saints. I, I mean, if Fields was playing this game, maybe, maybe i go other, another way on this. But then again, the spread may be a little lower. But, nah, I like New Orleans here. I, I mean, it's just where it is. That number seven and a half makes you want to mess with something else like an over-under. But right, I still want to take the Saints. Right. All right, next one here. The, uh, one, one of the other games, games of the week here. we got Seattle Seahawks and the Baltimore okay. face the Ravens. The Ravens five and a half point favorites. The over-under is 43 and a half. Again, it's for Seattle, uh, benchmark games. You want to be taken seriously as a, as a possible tier one team, you win these games. Um, their defense is good. I will say that. Yes. Oh, yes. I want to take the under this one. I want. I really want to take the under this one. Um, What's the start time? Uh, this, this is a one o'clock game also, I believe. Oh, there you go. I That's believe so. Um, let me make sure real quick. But, um, I mean, coming all the way from Seattle to Baltimore. Well, they played in Cincinnati a week ago, and they played very well, in fact. Again, that's not Baltimore, man. That's like so, another hour and a half flight. God. Fuck, give me the Ravens. I'll take the Ravens here at home. It's, it, I think it'll be a really good game, but I think the Ravens will win inside by a touchdown. 27-20, right? That's, that's possible, right? Yeah. Give me the under. Bad, I, I, one o'clock game. Sorry, West Coast offense ain't traveling that good. No, no. All right, next one here. Tammy Buccaneers heading to Houston face the Texans. The Texans are two and a half point favorites. The over under is forty. Man, that's tough loss for Texans. Man, that, yeah, have they won that game because it's Carolina? When I look at this team, is like okay, four and three, and maybe a wild card possibility here halfway through the year. Yeah. Instead, they lose the worst team in football. I had 14 points on them in my pick em league. I don't even want to think about it right now. Oh, shit. Sorry, brother. Sorry. Oh, man. Um, Tampa's a little bit of a skid now. They, they've lost three in a row, four uh, four last five. Um, I know I'm going to do it, man, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ride one more, year, one more week. I'm going to give me Houston. I'll, I'll bounce back this week. Tampa, I think Tampa's uh, pretty much done. Give me Baker. Give me one more. Give, give me Tampa at least for one more week. All right, all right. Next one: Indianapolis and the Carolina face the uh, the Panthers. Colts are two and a half point favorites on the road. Over under is forty four. What you got in this one? Gardner Minshew, man. I'm hey, I'm happy for Bryce Young getting that victory. I'm still a little in shock that he did, but give me the Colts. Yeah, I'm there too, man. Like even even Carolina's win last week. That was, that was kind of not, not, not fluky, but come on, it wasn't that pretty. That felt fluky to me. <laughs> any, any Carolina wins are fluke at this point. All right, Ugh, here we go. This one: the Giants and the Vegas face the Raiders. Raiders are only two and a half point favorites over under thirty seven and a half. How are the fuck are the Raiders only a two and a half point two and a half point favorite at home against the Giants? I can tell you why. 
Devonte Adams does not want to be there. So that's a huge issue on that team when they're on offense on the field. Right. I get it. But damn. I mean the Giants right is now. It, my, isn't Jones cleared to come back to? They they were hoping to start him in two weeks as Dallas. Oh. And I they I think they moved him up one week. And they got Danny DeVito playing quarterback. I mean sorry, Tommy DeVito. <laughs> Who was I mean, come on. Um Give me Vegas as one, bro. Because because even last night against, against the Lions, they look competitive. Give me the under. I don't care what how it could be thirty. I would be shocked if it was hit. Yeah, that that's how how low scoring I think it'll be. Okay, I, I can see that. All right, uh, there's another huge game. Here we go. The Dallas Cowboys and the Philadelphia face the Eagles. Eagles three point favorites over under 46, 46 points. A lot of respect there for the Cowboys. On the road, too. They play the Eagles tough. First game in two years at full strength. And then you have the Eagles, who have yet to play a complete game. So, it it makes it tough. If you could see Philly on offense, Jalen Hurts clicking, the Mm -hmm. passing game clicking, the run... The run attack, the rushing attack, clicking. Their defense firing all on all cylinders. It'd be one thing, but I mean, they're always only firing on one little thing, and they're still seven and one. They're the yeah. best team in football. They are. Where are you on this one, Philadelphia? Yeah, I'm gonna go over. I'm gonna go over this game. Um, I could see an upset. It wouldn't stop me. But if I had a pick, like, gun to my head, I'm going to lean yeah. Philadelphia. But I'm going to take the over in this one. I can see, I can see fireworks. But I, can see, I can see some scoring going on here. You know, I can see that. All right, Sunday Night Football. Buffalo Bills and Cincinnati face the Bengals. Bengals, two and a half point favorites, over under 48 and a half. Kind of surprised the Bengals are only two and a half point favorites at home. Should I be shocked by that? No, I am. But, you know, there's still all the love in the world for Buffalo. They they beat Miami after Miami put up 70, so everybody still remembers that. I didn't – the way I felt after they beat Tampa last week, last Thursday, I didn't feel great after coming out of that game. You know, they looked good most of the game. They got the gas in the third, late, late in the third quarter, and then this Tampa, Tampa was a Hail Mary from winning that game. Give me Cincinnati. Cincinnati's back. They're back. What do you got this one? Cincinnati also? Uh, yeah. Come on. Joe Burrow owns the AFC quarterbacks. Mm-hmm. He's in the head of every single qu- quarterback in the AFC. Yeah. I'm going to tell him that. All right. Finally, Monday football, we have the LA Chargers heading to New York to face the Jets. This should be a good game. The Chargers are three-point favorites. The over-under 41.5. This is a, this is a very low. This is actually a very intriguing game, actually. Jets are four and three. So what you want? The four and three. Chargers playoff lives are, are, are at stake at stake here early. Um, I'm gonna go under in this one. <laughs> Wait, you go over in this one? Well, no. I mean, you made it first off. You made it sound like the the Jets are a good team. You realize that if they had a quarterback, they would be probably seven and one of them themselves. Yes, but they just got done playing a team that did not throw the football for an entire half of football. Yeah, no. And yet they still had to rely on a field goal with what four seconds to go just to get yeah. it to overtime. Yeah. Give me the Chargers. I don't care what happens to that team. Penalties, coaching. There's no way. They will not beat the hell out of the Jets. Oh, all right. Jets defense don't 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 sell anything. Yeah, okay, I get I get it. I get it. All right. Uh, call, quick FSU minute. Um, Florida State, Pittsburgh next week. Uh, I'm looking at the spread here. I'm trying to put the spread. We're number four. Do you see it? Or yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll touch on it in a second. I want to. I got. I got. A, I got a bone to pick with that. With that. that those rankings. Oh yeah. Um. So Florida State on the road, 21-point favorites. 15 and a half is the over-under. 
Um, Pittsburgh is what? Uh, two and six. It, I'm just cover this game. They're a frisky two and six. Yeah. Did, could could they cover three touchdowns though? Some of those. I like Pittsburgh plus the points. You you you're playing a safe FSU fan thing now every week now. Uh, yes. Yeah. Fuck you. I'm going. I'm going to go to cover. Cause they covered against Wake last week. I'm like, okay, fine. Let's do it again. Let's roll yeah. the dice one more time. <laughs> I never expected that, man. I couldn't yeah. believe. Okay, so real quick, as you mentioned the rankings, I, I, I was going to touch on that, but since you mentioned it, um, real quick, I'm going to bring it up right now. Um, the power first playoff rankings are out. Uh, number one, Ohio State. Number two, Georgia. Three, Michigan. Four, Florida State. Okay, five and six, Washington and Oregon in that order. Do you have any issue with the rankings? I have a, I have a bone, I have a bone to pick. I have a massive issue with the rankings. I have a massive issue with Ohio State being in the top one, the top two, or the top three. Mm-hmm. Who the fuck has Ohio State played? So Ohio State has played, and this is what, look. I I am hundred percent. I am hundred percent with you. Penn for State. Penn State and, or, and Notre Dame. There's only two games they've uh, they played worth of them. So, and that's why I got, got number one. I 100% agree with you for the record. They shouldn't even be in the top three. Yeah, exactly. Okay. First off, Michigan should be number one. Now, granted, yeah, Georgia's, gr- grant, granted, Georgia has played better teams, but Michigan has looked the best of all these four teams week to week. They beat, they beat every team the way you're supposed to. Um, stop points wise. So I would have gone Michigan number one, Georgia two, um, Ohio Georgia State. State. Uh, so FSU, look, FSU, look. I'm obviously I'm happy in the, in the top four. I think Washington should be in the fucking top top four. I I do too. I think the argument is whether or not it's Washington or Ohio State at four. Yeah, I think I, Florida State is number three. The what's helping? I think what's helping Florida State. Be honest with you, is the the LSU win is looking a little yeah. better now because LSU is starting to win on the back end of the schedule now. Yeah. So that's helping their case. Which is a reminder that Georgia has only played one tough opponent so far this season. And Kentucky. Yeah. Kentucky? Pretty much. Yeah. And I, I mean, K- Kentucky wasn't that great. <laughs> Auburn gave them a run for their money. South Carolina right. gave them a run for their money for three quarters. And I'll say this too. Also, I'm not. I'm not. Look, George, George, they're defending champions. They're defending back to back champions. So I'm. I, I'll give them leash. If they want to put number one, even though I'm. I'm Michigan one, Georgia two. Still, yeah. I, I would not be mad about that because again, defending champions get a little more leash. And I, and, and I respect respect. I, I'm with you on that one. But there's no way Ohio State should be number one in the country right now. No way in hell. That is no. bullshit. And not only that, you do that, and then their biggest win of the year, they're not even in the top 10 anymore. Penn State, number 11. So what, 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 what are you weighing? What, what exactly are they weighing Ohio State to put them in number one if you're taking out the team, the best team they've beaten this year, not in the top 10? If anything, if, if they go that far, then fucking put Washington number, number two, number one. They beat Oregon, actually. Yeah. They've beaten USC when they used to love USC, so. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that's my gripe. My gripe is there is Ohio State, obviously. I mean, look, are they a top four team? They don't feel like one, but I get it. But number one, stop. Yeah. Stop. Please. Please. Um. Other than that, that's about it really for me. Um, Alabama is slowly creeping again, quietly creeping. Number eight. They might have finally found a quarterback, you know, last couple of games. We may we shall see. So that's 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 the only grab I have really with the with the top uh, top uh top six, seven, whatever you call it. All right, NBA, quickly. Um a couple of things to touch on. I, I did a reaction podcast. Well, on the last episode I did a reaction to the James Harden uh trade. I want your thoughts on James Harden to the Clippers. I don't think it does a bit of help for the Clippers. I I don't understand why they made the trade, but hey, maybe they decided they needed bail. If maybe the NBA called and said, "Please bail out the 76ers. Take Harden for the year, and something we'll figure something out." I have no idea, but hey, it really helped the 76ers. 
built their bench back up. Yep. They got they have assets going forward for next year's off season. So it's great for them. They have assets for if they want to go after OG Nambi, for example, or any of those uh, other teams that be selling before the deadline. They have assets to use now for that. Again, this is what why Daryl Morey is such a great GM. And I think also the the Maxi leap we've, we've seen so far. Yeah. The season has helped a lot. Maxi, if this is what we're going to see going forward, just to keep Joel and be happy. Uh, yeah, I mean, if this is how he plays for the rest of the season, he's a top twenty player, top fifteen. So, Maxi, yeah, ooh, ooh. with, more, with more the numbers he's putting up, yeah, that's a SGA type jump he's having this year. Nice little, nice little segue. I like this. I, I did you, that. You're, you're smart. You're on purpose. You're smart. You're, 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 you've been podcasting long enough with me now for twelve years now. Long enough. Nice segue because we'll get to the last topic. So last week. And I actually got to, I got to credit our boy Chris for this too because he sort of texted this to us also too, but I actually agree with him on that. Um, basically, he's saying that SGA Shy Glows Alexander from Oklahoma City might be considered a top five player within the next year or so. And I tweeted out yes uh, Friday night during the uh, their game against um, I don't know who it was they played, but they won the game and he had a huge game. Um, I tweeted out basically saying that SGA at this time next year it may not be far fetched to look at him as a possible top high player in the league next year. Now, this is subjective because everybody, everybody this is different. So I, for, for, for context, I had SGA number 11 on my list when we did our rankings a month ago, you and I, I think yeah. you had him somewhere around the same number two. Do you remember the number? You had no, exactly? I think I had him like 15th or 16th. Right. So I said that I, I would actually agree to the fact that I, it would not be, I'm not saying it will happen. What I said was, it would be far fetched based on the list, because many of the guys on my list, my okay, my top five, for example, there's a few of those guys that could be out of that list next year. Like for example, I had uh, one through five. I had Jokic, Giannis, uh, I think I had Steph third, Luca fourth, and um, who's fifth? MD. KD. No, 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 no. At KD fifth. Okay. I can see KD getting, on my, getting out of that top five. Tatum should replace him, but I don't know what Tatum, if Tatum's going to leave. I haven't seen Tatum play a, a phenomenal game yet. He's been decent, but he hasn't been phenomenal yet. You look at all the guys ahead, ahead of SGA on my list. LeBron is on the, on the descent. AD is can't stay healthy. Booker is pretty good. But SGA is putting up numbers now. So with the, the SGA leap, alongside the Thunder, take another step forward. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but it's not far-fetched to be, see he could be a top-five player next year. Your thoughts? Well, I think a lot of it has to go back to his numbers in regard to winning last year and what his numbers will be versus what the rest of the team will be mm-hmm. doing this year. Understand that they might pick up 10 to 12 wins this season from last year, but is it because of SGA and another leap, or is it because they get a full season of Chet, who they didn't have for a single game last year. You're talking about a guy who's already had seven blocks in a game, right? He he is going to be a force on defense. Mm-hmm. Then you have Jalen Williams. What if he has another ascension? Josh Giddy. What if he makes another leap? He's good. Yeah, I mean they have so much young talent that is carrying that team. That. If they make a jump that Vegas is predicting uh, from a win a win loss total, is it because of SGA averaging thirty points a game, or is it his surrounding cast? I think it's all of it. I think SGA. I, I think so. SGA still has, has to be great. So so then, <clears throat> for me, just to get into top ten, he better freaking dominate in the playoffs, like. He can't get just a play-in game and go home. He has to get a full-on playoff series and dominate in a loss or dominate in a winning series and go to the second round to at least get a thought from me of being top 10. No, I, I agree with that. I agree with that. I think probably why Luka got top five discussion a couple years ago is because he started winning playoff games. Yeah, he literally single-handedly took a team to the conference finals. Right. That's why that's why I said I also when I I opened into the comment of yeah. not just individual but also the team has to improve also too also and see another leap. 
Yeah. So, but I would imagine he'll, he's cracking top 10, though, right? If that happens. If he gets to the second round of playoffs and dom- through domination, yeah. If, I'll tell you what, the, no, if the rest of the surrounding cast is why the team gets to, say, 50 wins and they they lose in a, a fight in the first round, then no. I, I don't think he's a top 10 player yet. Okay. Okay. Person. No, I, I no, I, I, I respect that, and I think that's it's also. And again, when I when I say that, it's also based on my wife's list. Like a, a yeah. lot of major publications had him in the top ten already. Like ESPN had number eight. So I get, I get that. If we're basing on, so if we use ESPN as a baseline, for example, the leap is still only three spots away. I mean, and based on the list, the guys who could be descending to also in the process to to trade out for for SGA being there. Yeah, and I think on that list, didn't they already have him ahead of Booker? I think so. Yeah, who what has gone to a finals? Like that, a lot of this list is so short term memory is disrespectful to what guys have done just two years ago, three years ago. A lot, a lot of those ESPN writers, though, like this is all like what about a bunch of writers together that they, they'll pull yeah. this stuff. They're all like a lot of them are like fanboys too. Also, that's one nerds that just think, you know, I don't know. And I get that, and they they probably travel with certain teams the whole season, so probably they're seeing that for a season. But as a fan, when you're looking at top ten players, you I think of a st- a star who literally wins in the playoffs. Yeah, yeah. But we'll see. I mean, they've been fun to watch so far this year. A lot of fun to watch. Oh, absolutely. So. So we'll obviously discuss that in the future, uh, in, in the in weeks once to come in the podcast. So anyway, Zach, follow him on Twitter at FSU Know It All, um, and uh, yeah, good luck, with your, good luck with your games. I guess. I mean, you blow me out right now. Hey man, <laughs> just watch that more on when you're watching OKC games. Oh, I do, I do. I, I, I dude, last night was giddy. Giddy was one that impressed me yeah. last night. So just saying. All right, buddy. Good job. All right, man.